Today I'm going to teach you how to keep the world's easiest micro pet. We're going to start off with building the habitat for it. And if you're not interested in having some little critter living in your habitat, this is still a good video if you're into house plants because you can make it just a plant terrarium if you wanted to. So first things first, you need to pick out your terrarium. I was unable to find any terrariums that worked for the situation locally, so I got this on Amazon. They had all kinds of different shapes and sizes of these, and it even came with these cute little tools. So once you pick that out, you want to get some screen and cut it down to size so that it fits your enclosure. So once you make sure that it fits properly, you're going to want to put something in the bottom to help with drainage. You can get little clay marbles, or in this case, I'm going to use pea gravel. Once you have a drainage system in place, you can put your screen back in. And the screen is going to act as a barrier between the substrate or the soil and the drainage system below. Next, you can add your substrate. I'm going to use this, some coconut fiber, and of course some leaf litter. The leaf litter is going to act as a food source for the creatures that we're going to put in here. And it will help make it look more natural. I put in a layer of coconut mulch first, just to help give it some additional drainage, and now I'm going to add the finer soil. You want nice fluffy soil so that your little pets can easily move throughout the soil. Next you can add your plants. I put in a lemon meringue pothos and a little baby snake plant. Now these are going to outgrow this container eventually so I'll have to repot them, but that's no big deal. Air plants are yet another good choice for this type of habitat. So you want to make sure you water your plants and mist down the substrate once everything's in place. You want it to be moist but not saturated. Now we're going to add the leaf litter. You can get little fairy garden items or fairy garden houses to put in here. This one, unfortunately, it technically works, but it looks too big. I think it looks goofy if I put that in there, so we're going to scratch that one. But I believe this time of year the dollar store has quite a few fairy garden items, so if you wanted to decorate it with some really tiny items, you could look there. And you can decorate it however you like. I also got some of these. So you can decorate it however you want, just make sure you include some natural things too, like some live plants, cork bark, soil, stones, twigs. But you can add other decorations. You can make it look like a whole little village if you really wanted to go all out. And in the future I might do something like that, but I wanted to start off small and I'll go into the details as to why in a little bit once I get to the care. But that's the basic setup, at least the initial setup. Like I said, eventually we'll have to expand with the plants and with the critters and all, but this is the initial setup. Super easy, fun, pretty cheap. Now I will unbox our new little pets and I'll teach you how to take care of them. Are you excited, monkey? Okay, so it's the next day and I got a couple more accessories to add to the little enclosure here. And look how nice this is. Props it up right there for you. So I'll just stick these in some random places. Little mushrooms. So now, more importantly, we can unbox the isopods. I got these from TC Insects, and they got here very quickly. I've never bought from them before, so I'm excited to see what's in here. But they had a huge selection of different kinds of isopods on their website, so check them out if you want to start getting into these. You can also find some of these on Josh's Frogs, but I noticed that TC Insects had a much larger selection. If you go to a local reptile expo, you can also find a lot of vendors at the shows that are selling isopods too.
You can see them moving around in there. I'll give you a better look, of course, but let me get the rest out of here. I got a few different varieties. These are the chocolate zebra. And these are the ones I'm really excited about, the rubber duckies. They're really cute, but they're also kind of expensive because these ones reproduce a lot slower than most of them. So they're not quite as common. I'm excited to get a look at those. And then here's the lava. And then I also got some springtails. I don't know how well these are going to show up because they're really, really tiny bugs. But basically you put them inside of your terrarium and they help act as a cleanup crew, similar to the isopods. And they're going to eat mold and waste and any kind of uneaten food, decaying plants, similar to the isopods, but these guys are kind of like their sidekicks. They help. So if you've seen some of my other videos, I have bioactive reptile and amphibian enclosures. And I talked about these in there as well because putting the springtails and the isopods in your reptile or amphibian bioactive terrariums is a really great way to help their enclosure sustain itself naturally and it'll help clean up after the reptile, it'll help aerate the soil. So it's really good for the health of your reptile or amphibian and for the health of the live plants that you put in the enclosure. So check those videos out if you want to see that. In this one, of course, there's no reptile or amphibian in here, but there are live plants, so they're going to be beneficial for that. But it's so cool to create your own little ecosystem. And if you do it properly, you can see how they all kind of just support each other and take care of each other. So these ones are going to go into the reptile enclosures, and I will show you that soon. But the rubber duckies are going to go in here. So there's one of them. That is actually really cute. Most people wouldn't think that a bug could be cute, but this one definitely is. I'm going to put it in here. I can't risk losing them. <laughs> that way if it crawls out while I'm showing you, it's at least contained where it belongs. So isopods are what a lot of people call pill bugs or roly polies. They're actually more closely related to crustaceans than they are to bugs. And it's really cool because a lot of people just think of them as like the wild type that you see under the rocks or in the dirt, like the grayish brown ones, but they come in so many different colors and patterns. And they make really, really neat, low maintenance pets. And they're fascinating too because they live in family groups and a lot of them even take care of their young, which is really cool. And a lot of people don't really give much thought to these little creatures, but like I was saying just a little bit ago, they're extremely beneficial to the environment or if you're making little terrariums or have reptiles or amphibians, they're really beneficial to them. And it's just cool to see how everything in this world really does play a role and how everything's connected and they help each other out. Because as I was saying, they're a really good cleanup crew. They'll clean up dead things, decaying plant matter, feces from other animals, fruits, vegetables. And then they also help take care of the soil, which is really neat. So you can see when they ship them, they give them a carrot as some food. And I'll go over a little bit more information on their diet in just a second. There's the rest of them. They do like humidity. So that's why they put this damp paper towel in there when they ship them. And look, I'm not a bug person. I'm scared of bugs. So if I'm able to get this close to them and not be afraid, then you know that these things are pretty cool. Even though, like I said, they are more closely related to crustaceans than bugs, but you know what I'm getting at. And you can see that one in the front there rolled into a ball as its defense. It got a little bit spooked. But the other ones are exploring their new enclosure. That one is 
also in its little defense, put it over in the soil. So you want to keep the soil nice and moist, but you don't want it to be saturated. They do like a humid environment. And they like plenty of things to hide under. And as I mentioned before, they appreciate moss and leaf litter and little pieces of bark so that way they can eat the decaying matter of the plants. You can feed them fruits, vegetables, and you can also feed them rapashi or pangea gecko food. Isopods do require a high calcium diet, so some people will give them a cuddle bone similar to the thing that you can find in the pet store that you give to birds. Or, well, I shouldn't say similar, it is the thing that you find in the pet store that you give to birds. But, if you feed them the Pangea or the Rapashi reptile food, you don't need to provide them with that extra source of calcium because the calcium is already in these diets, which is really, really nice. Just give them small amounts, maybe once a week. Possibly up to two times a week if you have a large colony and if you notice that the food is disappearing quickly. They're going to be most active at night, so you may see them as soon as it gets dark, they'll start emerging. And if you just fill up like a little water bottle cap with this stuff, you can mix this with water until it's the consistency of baby food. They will come up and eat that out of the cap. It's really cool to watch. And I've even seen some keepers put this in as just a dry powder and then spray a little bit of mist on it and they'll still eat it that way too. A lot of people will give them fish food or dog food, and yes, they can technically eat that, but a lot of keepers have reported that when they feed their isopods that, it attracts unwanted pests such as gnats and mites, and you don't want that. So it's recommended that you avoid feeding fish food and dog food. Isopods can live for an average of three to four years. They are fairly easy to breed under proper conditions and they can have large broods. So if you have the proper setup for them, you won't really need to replace them because even though they'll die off around three to four years of age, they'll have lots of offspring to carry on in their place. These are a great unique pet that are fascinating to watch, cheap, very low maintenance, but just so interesting. So if you want something that's gonna help with your bioactive terrariums, if you have frogs or lizards, or if you just want something cool to put in a plant terrarium, I highly recommend that you look into getting some isopods. They come in so many different colors and patterns, so I'm sure you'll find one that appeals to you. And it's cool to look beyond your typical pet. Now, if you watch my channel, you know I have a variety of different animals. I have your standards, I have a dog, I have chickens, I have a horse. But if you're not into your stereotypical pets or require more attention, more maintenance, then check out isopods. They're pretty cool. So I'm going to add these to the reptile enclosures now, so I'll give you a better look at them as we do that. So let's get to it. There's Fable, my chameleon gecko. He's going to get some zebra isopods. I also breed crested geckos, so these guys are going to go in the big breeder tank.
And the lava ones are gonna go in Gonzo's tank. He's my 16-year-old Crested Gecko, the oldest pet I have. Well, technically that's not true. My horse is 17, but I've only had her for almost a year now, so he's the longest pet I've had. Isn't he beautiful? Springtail going in. 